So welcome everybody. Again, my name is Crystal. I am the Center for Academic Success Director at Los Angeles Pierce College. Um, that's our peer education center. Um, I'm also a coordinator for the California Community Colleges Success Network, 3CSN for short. And 3CSN is here to, uh, it's, it's um, an organization that's funded out of the chancellor's office and we're here to create some networks and some opportunities for amazing practitioners to, like you to get together network, talk about our um, our skills and talk about what's worked for us, talk about what hasn't worked for us. So we can share all of that good, good experience. And so we can go back to our own institutions and implement new things that help us create more powerful and student-centered environments. So everybody, um, it's a community of leaders here. We all take turns presenting and sharing our information. So uh, today, our team of three CSN uh, uh, coordinators, interns, and Pierce College peer educators and former peer educators are going to talk a little bit about an oldie but a goodie. This is sort of a classic. We're going to do something called a think aloud and paired problem solving. This is a method that you can use with your students if you're a faculty member, your students if you're an SI leader, if you're a tutor. Um, or even if you're working one to one or in small groups, it's got a lot of wonderful applications. We're going to talk a little bit about what metacognition is and how this particular strategy really um, encapsulates it and helps us uh, make it real in the tutoring or SI or classroom or um, mentor session. So we're very excited to have you here. Um, I already introduced myself. We also have Cameron, Lindsay Ann, and Lindsay Lazo. So um, they are all here. They're interns, graduate students, um, and either peer educators or uh, were recently peer educators for Pierce College. And also I want to give a shout out to Rosanna Samian from Chafee College, who actually developed this presentation in the first place and then was too busy to give it. So we stole it. We invite you to steal this also, it's all stealable. Please take it. Please do with it what uh, you would like to, and please make it even better. So the way this is going to work is uh, we are going to ask you to do a lot of participation. You can participate in the chat. Find that chat. We've got people monitoring the chat. So tell us your tangents, your links, your ideas, your experiences, your questions. Make the chat alive. Make it yours. If you have questions, you can raise your Zoom hand and we'll invite you to unmute yourself. And of course, use those reaction buttons. Tell us what's working, tell us what's funny, tell us what you love. Um, it helps us understand that you exist and that we're not presenting to our Cabbage Patch Kids. So today we are going to have two outcomes. We're gonna describe what a think aloud method is. Um, and we're gonna talk about how we would explain that process to a student. And we're going to apply a routine known as TAPS or Think Aloud Paired Problem Solving in a short online tutoring session. So that's what we're going to talk about from three to four. If you have to go at four and have a weekend and be on do your thing, that's great. We understand. If you want to stay, we're going to hang out from four to four thirty and we're going to dive more deeply into this notion of metacognition. Specifically, we're going to look at what what we mean by metacognitive beliefs and how we notice them and change them. So if you want to stick around, we'd love to have you, but we understand that you're busy. If you got to go at four, that is fine. Just to get ourselves ready for the learning, we're going to talk about a couple of community agreements so you can prepare yourself for what's coming up ahead. This is an active participation session. You're going to be in breakouts. You're going to be talking. You're going to be doing. You're going to be practicing, right? So there's going to be some listening, but a lot of doing. So please do turn on your cameras if you can. It really does help the human brain connect to other human brains. Super important for connection and, and comprehension for all of us, presenters and um, participants alike. Be present, we will do paired work. And I see or somebody has already told me that they can't be in the breakout, because these are veterans. If you can't be in the breakout, because say you're Vanya and you're picking up your kids at school or whatever, whatever reason, we get it. We understand that you're doing 15 things at once. Um, but to the extent that you can, please do participate. We will do breakout work. If you cannot be in a breakout, please do let Lindsay Lazo know. Um, in the chat or just let me know and I'll let them know. But tell us, we don't judge, we're just happy you're here. If you can't go into a breakout room, that's perfectly fine. 
Also, just remember that we're going to be trying something that could, could potentially be new today. And um, we might get you a little confused. And that's awesome. We love confusion. We love questions. So please embrace those questions and confusion and tell us what's coming up for you. And then just be really nice. Whatever kindness means for you, do a little bit of extra of that kindness today so that we can all create an environment where we can all feel a little vulnerable and a little open and we can learn all, all the better, all right? So that's it for the intro. Let's get into some of the content. And for that, we're gonna kick it over to Cameron. Take it hey, away. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much, Bristol. So we're gonna be talking about peer education. So what are the goals of peer education? The goal of peer education is to support students as to strengthen their learning processes so they become more independent learners. It's really important that we support them and show them that we care and that we're there for them. So yeah. next slide. All right, so one of the things we're gonna do right now is we're gonna talk about um, metacognitive uh, strategies. How do we encourage students to work together, recognize, monitor, and improve their own learning processes? So we're gonna actually take a poll. I'm gonna give you about two minutes and we're gonna see what are the strategies that um, you like. Take, so, and if you, if there is a strategy on that you, you think of that isn't on that poll, feel free to please write that down in the chat and post it for everyone to see. We love sharing. So if you, so yeah, sorry. I'm, Got so much nervous energy today. All right, well, I'm gonna launch this poll. And I just wanna say, as you're working through this, that I got these metacognitive strategies from the past workshops. So what we wanna know is what kinds of strategies do you see on this list that you already use in your classrooms, in your tutoring sessions, or in your SI sessions, or your mentor sessions, all right? So top 10 things that we see tutors, mentors, and faculty members, and SI leaders do in their sessions to help people think a little bit more deeply about their learning. We wanna hear from you. Which ones do you do? Here we go. So two minutes Woo! to pull that out. Do you see it? Cool, thanks, Hal. Encourage your students to learn. Right. I'll restate that again. So the one that is seeming has the highest votes for it is encouraging confusion, mistakes, and uncertainty. And I, I very much agree with that because when we encourage students to be confused, to be able to make a mistake, there's really a lot of opportunity for growth. There's a lot of opportunity for students to actually learn more from what they're doing. And it also makes a safe space where students feel safe enough where they can actually express this and when they express this it gives us opportunities as educators to help guide them through their learning processes so I, I love that one and explain or elaborate on answers is another great one because often we, they may have an answer but they don't understand it to its fullest like why is this the correct answer I get that it's the correct answer but why is it what is the reasoning behind that 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 answer and I think it's really great that to explain like when I do tutoring sessions and I always like, don't just go, yeah, you have the right answer. I'm like, yes, let's discuss why this is relevant to the course and why it is correct. So lovely, lovely questions. Um, so the next other one was active reading. Love that. That one is great. That I, I preview that for students so they know how to do that. All right, so um, we're gonna be moving on. Uh, no, things not. All right, so I'm gonna be putting in the chat the uh, TAPS guide. Uh, if you are unable to download it, please let Crystal know. Send an e like we can email you it, but hopefully you'll be able to download it. So um, we have the chance, please download it and keep it because we're gonna be using it in future breakouts. This will include the readings that for um, TAP instructions, the roll cards and sample problems for today's activities. All right, I'm not seeing anyone not having it. Um, all right, looks like everybody has it. All right. All right cool. All right. And so I'm going to be handing it off to Lindsay Ann. All righty. Now that you have your TAPS guide, we're going to do a read together. So basically, we're going to take eight minutes to read the article that's found in your TAPS guide. It will be on the first page of the TAPS guide. And during this reading, you're going to select a golden line, which is anything that's powerful, interesting, or engaging that just stands out to you that you read throughout the article.
So our agreements for reading together is that you can read quietly. Um, you can start or stop whenever you want to. This article is yours to keep, so it's okay to not finish. Um, these golden lines are for yourself as you read throughout the article, and um, it's okay to have any questions or even disagree with the author. We love the different um, perspectives that you have to bring, you know. And um, if you'd like, you can shut off your camera as you take the time to read. And it's group work from here on out. So if you can't do the group work, again, this is a reminder to let Lindsay Lazo know now in the chat. All right, and just to clarify, um, we put the, the guide in the chat in two forms. Uh, we put an actual um, file in there that says tax guide. Um, so you'll see like a Word file. You can download it if you like that way. Um, if that doesn't work for you, if downloading isn't your is, isn't working for you, I'd also just went ahead and put a tiny URL in there that'll take you to the tax guide that way as well. So is there anybody at this point who's still having a hard time getting it? If you still have a hard time getting it, we will go ahead and email it to you. So please do let us know if you're still having a hard time. Does anybody not have it? Beautiful. So in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to open it up and you're going to find the reading. Oops, excuse me. I'm opening it up for you. And here is your reading right here on the first couple of pages. So we're just going to take a few minutes to read this. Any questions? Okay, Eduardo, we're putting it up again. All right, beautiful. So we're setting the timer. Eight minutes, Lindsay Ann? Yes. Beautiful. All right. So go ahead and read silently and go ahead and shut off your camera if you need to. We'll see you back here in eight minutes. Finish up the last thing that you were reading, the last sentence. And now we're going to go out into breakout rooms of two to three. And in these breakout rooms, please introduce yourself. So your name, your pronouns, your college, the role that you play at your um, college and um, discuss what you got from the article. So talk about the golden line that you had picked out and think about how you would explain this concept to a student and then share what you would do um, after having read this article. So now I'm gonna let Crystal put you all into breakout rooms. Perfect. All right, folks. Uh, I've got most people going into breakout room with three. Cool, so we'll pull you back here in how long? 10 minutes. All right, pull you back here in 10 minutes. See you soon. Well, hello there. Uh, hey. Actually, hey, everyone. I, I, could, I could join in. I thought oh, you someone would need my help okay. outside, but last okay. week they, they said no. I'm like, okay, cool. So I could. Oh, very cool. Age. <laughs> so I'm going to put you in room two that only has two people. So that's perfect. All right, then sounds good. Um, oh wait, no, it has three. But one of them is Lindsay, so that that'll be a good one. Or should I put you in Vanya, Cameron, Craig, Hal? Let's see. Oh, this is such a hard choice. I'm gonna put you in room four with some veterans. Veterans, okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, see you soon. All right then, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back, everybody. I see more cameras on. That makes me so happy. I was just reading about the importance of seeing human faces in like our own emotional regulation and learning. And then, then it just made me reflect on a world of black screens and white print. So nice to see your faces. Thank you so much for participating. All right, so we're recording again. I'm gonna share my screen and I believe Lindsay L is gonna walk us through the next portion, right, Lindsay? Yeah, for sure, all right. Hopefully that was a good breakout. I know I stayed in my breakout the whole time. We had a really great conversation. So we are actually going to practice tabs. But before we get into that, into the directions and what you'll be doing, we wanna explain why this is such a valuable tool. Um, so just number one, like it surfaces and promotes those good learning strategies. Um, so we keep talking about metacognition, right? The thinking about our thinking process. Um, this is a really good tool to get students engaged in metacognition. It also promotes independent learning and student pairs. So a little bit of social learning, but outside of the quote unquote experts, right? Ooh. And it also builds communication and metacognition. Um, so metacognition, as I mentioned, but also being able to communicate your ideas to another person. 
Um, so how we're going to do this is one student. Um, so I know we're in groups of three, so we'll have an observer in there, but one of you will be someone who thinks out loud while the other two are listening. I want you to really key into and notice the learning strategies and what that thinking aloud person is doing. And then you'll have a chance to switch the role. We'll have another person who is thinking out loud. The other two will listen. Um, and then students, uh, both of you will do some crosstalk. Um, so next slide. If you go back to your task guide, so make sure you pull that back up. We do have the instructions uh, one by one on page six. Um, so thank you, Cameron, for throwing that back into the chat in case you need to grab that again. Um, go to page six. Next slide. And we will be following those instructions. We are going to put folks back in the breakout room. I saw a message to me. Yes. Um, thank you, Enrique. I will put you in that breakout room. Um, you'll have one minute to read over those instructions and then decide who the first problem solver is and who the listeners are. Um, and the problem that you'll solve is either on page eight or nine. Um, so go ahead and take a look at that. But first, before we go into those breakout rooms, it gives me a chance to also uh, fix them up. We'll have a demonstration by Lindsay and Cameron how this looks like. All right, so I see an article, is Google making me stupid? I don't know about how I feel about that. I feel like Google makes me smart because there's a lot of information out there. Okay, what the internet is doing to our brains. Okay, I see a picture of a police stopping somebody over, but they don't even have a car, they have a book. Uh, I'm gonna keep reading because I don't know what the picture is. So immersing myself in a book or a lengthy article used to be so easy. Now my concentration often starts to drift after two or three pages. I feel like my concentration drifts after two sentences. I get fidgety, lose a thread, begin looking for something else to do. I feel as if I'm always dragging my wayward brain back to the text. Um, yes, I can't really still relate the picture back to what's going on, but yeah. I noticed that when you were reading the, just the headline, in fact, you made a note to yourself of that uh, an internal note of like, do I really agree with that? So you, you, you all, you read it, you also questioned the title, then you went into the actual reading itself, where you related it back to yourself, where you talked about like two to three pages, and you acknowledged now for me, it's like two to three sentences. So you're also thinking about how attention span actually lasts for like other people. And you, so I noticed that you took the time to read it, to think over different parts and relate it back to your own uh, self and to the situation. And you also analyzed the picture, looking at it and coming up with what it might have to do with what's going on. Yeah, that's exactly that's what I did. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. And you got a little crosstalk right there at the end. Very nice. All right, friends, we are going to do this in two rounds. So again, we'll have one person listening, the other person problem solving, and then we'll switch. Um, and then we will make sure also to broadcast when to switch. Um, so keep an eye out for that little blue box right at the top. Um, are there any questions about what we will be doing? Questions? Okay, I've reworked the breakout groups. Most folks are still in the same group. Um, so, awesome. Go ahead and go on in. Welcome back, everybody. I hope a couple of people got a chance to practice and you got at least through one round, maybe two. Did you get through some rounds? Did people get to practice? All right, awesome, so good. So welcome back, it's so good to see you again. I just wanted to um, debrief this a little bit. So what we're gonna do is just take a, 
a minute or so to reflect on, um, oh, wow. Sophia and Lindsay Ann got through two rounds. All right. All right, and, and Vanya, am I, am I muted? Can you hear me? Oh, I think you're frozen, Vanya. Um, there you are. Okay, yes, thank you. Back. Yeah. Um, just take a minute or two to reflect on one, two, or all of the following questions, whichever question resonates with you most. We'd love to just have some share outs. So what did it feel like to be on the spot? Um, what did it feel like to slow that thinking down that much? Was that weird? What was it like to sit there and listen to somebody else think? <laughs> That's a little weird too. Um, what, did it, what did it look like to take the time to notice and describe somebody else's thinking? Or for bonus points, sort of how might you use this in an SI session, tutoring session, classroom, whatever, whatever context you're in? So just take a minute to think about that and go ahead and raise your hand when you're ready to share out. And what I'll do is we'll start the share out when we see two hands go up. So just take a minute to reflect, raise your hand when you're ready to share, and we want to hear at least two share outs. All right, I already see some hands up. That was fast. All right, we've got to already have some hands up, ready to share out. What was it like? How did it feel? How might you use it? Uh, let's see, go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, so um, I was the observer in, um, in my group. So I had um, Mitra and Cindy doing the thinking and talking. And it was really interesting to me, uh, the difference between their approach, because Mitra is very comfortable with math, right? Mitra is a statistics uh, tutor, so math is great. She has fond memories of math. Um, but Cindy kind of got stuck because uh, Cindy didn't know what to do. Cindy wasn't sure, you know, couldn't remember anything about math and also didn't have good memories of math and it really stopped that process. Um, yeah, yeah, Cindy so says she panicked. <laughs> um, and so like the affective component completely changed the outcome of whether they were able to problem solve through it too. Um, and that's, I think that's something again that just like bringing that to my awareness is just like yeah, emotions can really get in the way of the learning process and the problem solving process. Because if you already don't like it, you're not going to think about the strategies to take. Thank you. It's such a good thing to surface. And Cynthia, thank you so much. It's so brave of you to surface that too. And I will surface that I had the same response when Chafee College did this presentation and I, and I was at it. I was just like, what is math? Well, I felt like I forgot what numbers were. And like, I think that's so important to remember when we're working with students who are panicking and confused and nervous and all that stuff, right? What does that mean for their comprehension? And if I couldn't even remember, you know, what, how to count to 10 in that situation, what does that mean for students? So thank you. Uh, go ahead, Cameron, take it away. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, I think I didn't get too deep into that. <laughs> um, so when I went up uh, to read, I went over the Dow thing, the Dow article, and it was very, it's very difficult to read and understand its exact meaning. It's a lot of metaphoric and uh, very symbolistic words and, and uses and, and sentence structures. And so I verbally sat there and struggled through it, which was a bit embarrassing. But I, I also went over any thought I had. I was like, well, I think this is about life or uh, desire. And so it, it, it's very difficult to just be that vulnerable where you are admitting you don't really understand the exact content, but to keep going at it, keep looking at it, evaluating it, I think is very empowering, especially for students. And it was very empowering for me to sit there and uh, actually present and then hear back what others observed about my, ability, my, my thought process. I think that was also very confidence boosting. I think that's other thing is like when somebody then tells you how they saw you think, it can build up your own confidence and your own rationale skills, which I think is part of the benefit of this kind of practice is that 
it's not this person saying, oh, you're terrible. You did a bad job. You just didn't understand. It's like, I noticed you thought about this. You kept relating it back to that. You tried to make it a cohesive. Like, these are constructive comments that help build my confidence as a learner or a student. Yeah. I think that's really important. Wonderful. Thank you. I think that's so important to underscore the power and the empowering nature of showing somebody how awesome they are. Because sometimes we can't see how awesome we are and what skills we're using. To have somebody there who, who's got your back, who can show you how awesome you are is really, really wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So if you have to go now, it's four o'clock, come back next week and we will have um, one of, we'll have a peer mentor come back and talk about the intersection between mentoring and peer education. We're really excited about that. Lessons from a peer mentor on peer education. Um, if you are going to stick around, then we're going to talk about metacognitive beliefs and watch a little video. It's going to be pretty awesome. But if you do need to go, make sure that you look in the chat. There's three links there. One is an application to facilitate one of these workshops in fall 2022. So if you've got some homies who you think you can present with, who've got some great ideas, we would love to uh, empower you and help you um, and scaffold you so that you could do one of these in the fall semester. Also, please give us some feedback, super important for our learning, also super important for our funding. Make sure you tell us what you think. Um, and finally, if you would like to join us next week, there is a link to register for next week as well. So um, if, um, if you're going, totally understandable. We love you. Um,